How can you live in the lap of luxury while also saving hundreds of dollars? Where can you find some of the best date night restaurants without blowing your budget? And is it true that you can be part of a Disney parade just by picking one hotel over another? Find out why guests are choosing moderate resorts above the rest in Disney World here on DFB Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. Today's focus is all about Disney's moderate resorts. Those are the ones who don't cost as much as the super fancy ones and cost a little bit more than those very basic ones and why you should or maybe even shouldn't consider booking one for your next Disney World vacation. Moderate resorts are like the middle child of the Disney Resort family. Their prices are mid-range, their atmosphere is classy but not overly so, and their amenities are better than average, but maybe not the best that you're gonna find on property. I know, I know, this is all very vague, right? But before we really get to dissecting the best and worst sides of the moderate resort world, I want you to know that we've got a cheat sheet with important resort snacks that you're only going to be able to find at the Disney-owned hotels. Send us your email at disneyfoodblog.com resorts, and we're going to send our list of favorites along with price tags and locations right to your inbox. Okay, time to dive into moderate resorts, which I absolutely love talking about because I know they can be so confusing for folks. It doesn't matter whether you're staying at a value, a moderate, or a deluxe resort. Wherever you choose is gonna have its own personality, and the hotel personalities over at the moderates are some of the most unique you're gonna find. Disney's Port Orleans Riverside and French Quarter are two different sides of the same coin. While Riverside celebrates rural Louisiana with its Alligator Bayou and Magnolia Bend, French Quarter takes you down in the heart of New Orleans for a Mardi Gras Jubilee, just a much tamer version than you might be familiar with, so no stress. Disney's Caribbean Beach has a much more tropical ambiance, pulling from the island influences of Barbados, Jamaica, Martinique, Trinidad, and Aruba. So expect to see lots of brightly colored buildings, sandy beaches, and floral accents. Disney's Coronado Springs, on the other hand, has decor inspired by Spanish, Mexican, and Southwest American cultures, meaning you'll find desert theming, Mayan pyramids, and really, really good margaritas. The resort's neighboring Grand Destino Tower elevates the swanky factor of this hotel with Salvador Dali design and modern artwork. We often say that Grand Destino feels more like a deluxe resort rather than a moderate one, but we're gonna touch more on that subject later on. It's really a place where you can get a lot of bang for your buck. And then there are the cabins at Disney's Fort Wilderness. A lot of people forget about these when they think about the moderate resorts. These cabins take on a whole new meaning when it comes to staying at a Disney hotel. Instead of a standard room, which places you right next to other guests, the cabins here are actual cabins out in the middle of the woods. These cabins not only give you your outdoor patio and kitchen space, but they also give you a much needed dose of peace and quiet after those long park days. And don't think like bare minimum basics cabins. This is definitely glamping. So now that I've sort of introduced you to the moderate resorts, let's talk about why people choose to stay here. Why would you pick something more expensive than a value resort, but not as luxurious as a deluxe? Well, there are three key reasons. Number one, you get several amenities and recreational opportunities. The moderate hotels don't hold back on the fun. You can still fill an entire day at any particular one of these resorts without having to leave the resort and you won't get bored. So here's just a taste of the different activities so you know what I'm talking about here. Much like any of the hotels, the moderates have their leisure and feature pools. But the theming around some of these feature pools is incredible. Like how you'll find a full Mayan pyramid towering over the dig site pool at Coronado Springs, while also being able to take a dip in the largest hot tub found on any of the Disney Resort properties. Caribbean Beach's Fuentes del Moro pool is themed like a colonial Spanish fortress and has not one but two speedy water slides. And French Quarter's got a full-on sea serpent as their water slide, so like what more could you ask for really? Port Orleans Riverside and French Quarter also have horse-drawn carriages, bike and Surrey bike rentals, and catch and release fishing excursions. Fishing excursions can also be found over at Fort Wilderness and Caribbean Beach or pretty much any Disney World hotel with a marina. And if you're over at Fort Wilderness, you're in for the biggest recreational bundle of them all. Fort Wilderness has so many outdoor activities for you to choose from, like archery and pony rides and canoe and kayak rentals, bike rentals, even a full-blown wilderness back trail adventure on a Segway. Just keep in mind that while some offerings come complimentary with your resort stay, others are going to cost extra and may also recommend making advance reservations. Okay, second reason you might want to choose a moderate. Some have deluxe style benefits. Just because you're paying less for these rooms doesn't necessarily mean you're getting less. In fact, I'd argue that Grand Destino Tower is in many ways more deluxe than not. 
For starters, Grand Destino Tower, which is part of Coronado Springs Resort, is the only one with club-level rooms to book, which will give you access to the resort's private Kronos Club that features free snacks and refreshments all day long. Free in a relative sense, that is. We'll talk more about room prices later on. Coronado Springs is also the only moderate resort with two fitness centers, valet parking, and a salon with massage therapy sessions and facial treatments, too. Even if you don't book a club level room here, you're still gonna have access to two awesome lounges in the Grand Destino Tower. The Barcelona Lounge downstairs and the Dahlia Lounge way upstairs at the top. And as you're gonna discover when we dive into all the moderate resort food offerings, Coronado Springs and Grand Destino Tower reign as undefeated champs for having the best and most dining options across all of the moderate resorts, no cap. When it comes to rooms, the moderate resorts can hook you up real nice. Port Orleans Riverside has a royal guest room option with theming centered around the Disney princesses, mostly Tiana, since this is a Louisiana-inspired resort after all. You'll see details like sink heads shaped as magic lamps, artwork featuring several of your favorite Disney princesses and their princes, and best of all, headboards that light up with LED fireworks over beautiful bayou paintings. But let's not forget those full-on cabins over at Fort Wilderness. The cabins here can sleep up to six adults and include a living room, a bedroom, a full bathroom, private patio, charcoal grill, and a full-size kitchen. And reason number three why you might want to book a moderate resort, they will give you a classier resort experience than you can get at the value resorts, but you won't normally have to pay those super high prices like you will at the deluxe resorts. Simple as that. It's a good middle of the road Goldilocks option. Moderate resorts can be a great option for young couples, bachelorette parties, honeymoons, baby moons, or any other special event where you want to stay somewhere stylish, but still save some money in the meantime. And while your little kids will love these just fine, this is also a good choice for people with teens or tweens, kind of older kids that maybe aren't as wowed by those larger than life plexiglass versions of characters that you'll find at the value resorts. Now. For every pro, there's a con. I know it sounds like I'm team moderate resort through and through, and in several ways I am. But moderate resorts are by no means perfect. In fact, they could flat out be perfectly wrong for you and your group, and here's why. Pay attention to these cons, because some of these might be a deal breaker for you. So first up, you're not going to get extended evening hours. Even if you're staying at Grand Casino Tower and feel like you're living in the lap of luxury, you're still staying in a moderate resort, meaning you won't have access to those deluxe theme park perks, the extended evening hours. Now these are available for deluxe resort guests and allow you to stay in certain parks on select nights up to two hours after they close for everyone else. This can be a great way to get on some popular rides without all the crowds or snag a virtual queue for rides like Tron and Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind without having to worry about those boarding passes getting all booked up in a matter of seconds. But unfortunately, a moderate resort stay just ain't gonna cut it for that deluxe benefit. However, you'll still be able to use early theme park entry, which lets all Disney Resort guests enter any of the parks on any days, 30 minutes before they open for everyone else, which can still give you a head start on getting in those priority ride lines on the day of your visit. Next reason you might not want to stay in a moderate resort, most of these are really spread out. You may not think about a big resort being a bad thing, but because these moderate resorts are so spread out, there are some hotel buildings that are placed way out in the booties, Far away from the lobby, dining, certain modes of transportation, feature pools, rental locations, you get the idea. Bigger isn't always better. And you're already walking a lot in the parks and you don't need to trek across your hotel too. I'd probably say the most confusing of these expansive resort layouts would have to be Fort Wilderness. When it comes to Fort Wilderness's bus routes, there are three color lines that'll take you to different sections of the resort. Now, remember, this has nothing to do with the parks. This has nothing to do with the actual like roads in Disney World. This is literally just inside Fort Wilderness that you're gonna have to figure out these bus routes. They've got purple, orange, and yellow bus routes. Every line starts and finishes at the Settlement Depot and the Outpost Depot, but the routes themselves will wind around different routes to each different cabin area and section. So while the purple line might take you closer to the recreational areas, where you can shoot some b-ball or take a dip in the leisure pools, the yellow and orange lines might take you to the meadows, where you'll find a lot of the resort's main amenities, like rental services, the meadow feature pool, and sundry shops. It's a doozy, that's for sure, and it's even more of a doozy when they decide to switch up the color routes, which they've been known to do on occasion. That's why lots of guests prefer renting golf carts here to help them get around this resort. Now this is a special, special tip. If you're gonna stay in the Fort Wilderness cabins, or even at a regular campsite, consider booking a golf cart and book it early because they do sell out. 
Now you can rent electric golf carts at the reception outpost between $63 and $79 per day. Advanced reservations are highly recommended, which you can make by calling 407-824-2742. But you can also try booking one upon your arrival as well. It's just not a guarantee that any will still be available when you get there. And to add insult to injury, these resorts are typically pretty far away from the parks. Aside from Caribbean Beach, which has that Skyliner access over to Epcot and Disney's Hollywood Studios, you're going to have to factor in a good chunk of travel time from your hotel over to the parks just to make it before rope drop or to make sure you have plenty of time to get over to your advanced dining reservation. If you want to make sure the room you're booking is close to a certain amenity, make sure to book a preferred room rather than a standard. For around 10 to 20 more dollars per night, you can get closer to the transportation, closer to the main lobby, closer to the food, closer to the feature pool. You can also put in room requests while you're doing your online check-in to let the front desk know which amenities exactly you prefer to be closest to. Now, Disney can't 100% guarantee that you'll have these requests fulfilled, but if they can make it happen, then they'll make it happen. And if your specific requests aren't listed on the online check-in, then go ahead and call directly. The third reason why you might not want to stay at a moderate resort is even if the moderate resorts aren't as expensive as the deluxe resorts, they're still pricey. We'll get into the pricing details later, but just to give you a heads up, moderate resorts on average are going to range in price between $300 and $400 per night. And that's still quite a bit of an investment to think about, especially if you're only planning on using these rooms as a place to crash each night and not much more than that. You may be better off booking a good neighbor hotel, which partners with Disney to provide guests with very similar Disney benefits like early theme park entry, shuttle services to the parks, etc., etc. Good neighbor hotels can give you a way more spacious room for that $300 to $400 per night price range, or better yet, they can set you up with a full suite for potentially less than that. To browse these hotel options and learn about their particular pros and cons too, make sure to browse the Good Neighbor Hotel website and compare what you're being offered at these locations versus what you're being offered at Disney's moderate resorts. As you know, some of our favorite places to stay that are priced much more like a moderate and sometimes even less, but still act functionally like deluxe resorts are the Swan and Dolphin Hotels. Those are right in the Epcot Resort area, right next to the Boardwalk Inn. And you may also wanna pick the brains of our friends at Small World Vacations. Those are certified travel agents, they're experts, they're full-time travel agents, they're not just doing this part-time, and they know just about everything when it comes to finding the best Disney deals for your stay. Best part is if they spot a discount, they'll apply it for you. You don't have to do that. You don't have to wait in line. You don't have to sit on the phone for hours waiting for Disney to pick up. They will do that for you, and that time is money. I'll link their info in the description below just in case you're interested in reaching out to them for a free quote. Okay, so now we've talked a little bit about the pros and cons of moderate resorts. We've introduced you to the moderate resorts. Now I am gonna talk about dining at these locations. I'm gonna talk about prices. I'm gonna talk about transportation, but all of that is a little more boring than this next section that I wanna talk to you about. And that's why I put it up here in the video. This is one of my favorite sections in these videos. We call it weird things you should know. So you know how I mentioned that the moderate resorts have very unique personalities? Well, these personalities can also be very quirky in the best and worst way. So these are some things about the specific moderate resorts that I would wanna know if I was deciding which one to stay in. So I guess that's why you watch this channel is because you know we're gonna dig in and not just give you the 101 and the basics, we're gonna give you all the weird stuff too. So let's start with Caribbean Beach. This can be the best and worst moderate resort of the bunch. It's very, very interesting. I was passionately against this hotel for many years until they actually built the Skyliner and then suddenly this thing had something going for it. And oh my goodness, I didn't know what to do. My brain exploded. So that big pro for Caribbean Beach, it's got that Skyliner access, which we're gonna talk about later. Big con, it is so spread out. So if you're placed in a room that's away from everything, you're gonna have to make quite a trek just to reach your resort amenities. Big pro though, you're so close to the Riviera Resort, making it easy to dine over there instead of at your own hotel. Which brings us to the next big con, there's a reason you may not wanna dine at Caribbean Beach and you wanna choose someplace else. The food options here aren't the best. And the big pro, Caribbean Beach is about to open up their new Little Mermaid themed rooms with fifth sleeper beds later on this year. But the cons, there are no elevators here. So if your room is on a floor other than the floor level, you'll have to take the stairs every time you leave and return. And that can get real old real fast if you're carrying kids or strollers or giant suitcases. 
Okay, I could probably go back and forth about how I feel about Caribbean Beach all day long, but we've already got a whole video on the channel where I do exactly that. What I'm trying to get at is that Caribbean Beach is a very black and white resort. Its pros are significant, but so are its cons. So it's important to study up and make sure the room style and the amenities you'll be paying for here are really gonna be worth it for you in the end. Now, let's talk about the weird stuff around Fort Wilderness. Now, you know that you can rent golf carts, but did you know that they have golf cart parades? Yep, not kidding. The guests at Fort Wilderness take their seasonal golf cart parades very seriously. They will deck out their rentals and streamers and lights and banners and top tier Disney theming. It is unbelievable. And usually there are hundreds of them parading around the resort, which anyone, even non-resort guests can go check out. These golf cart parades tend to happen three times during the year for 4th of July, Halloween, and Christmas. But if you plan on being around the area during any of these major holidays and you wanna either participate or be a spectator, make sure you know exactly when the parades are gonna happen because they usually don't take place on the actual holiday, but one or two days before. Now, obviously I love Coronado Springs Grand Destino Tower, right? But here's another little bonus extra for that hotel. You can take a sangria making class here. Who's ready to become a sangria making fiend? Maybe you already are, I don't know. But Sangria University takes place at Coronado's Three Bridges Bar and Grill and is a separately priced experience that teaches you how to make drinks from a sangria sommelier. No, you're not actually making the drinks out of the sommelier, you are learning from the sommelier. Sorry, English is hard. Now don't worry, this is a hands-on experience so you will have a chance to put your new skills to the test here as well. Classes cost $59 per adult, but only guests 21 and older will be able to participate in the sangria making experience. Younger guests are welcome to tag along and will be served snacks and non-alcoholic beverages, but they'll still be charged the full price of the class. So there you go. You can make advanced reservations on the Disney website or through the My Disney Experience app. Now, another interesting weird thing you need to know about is Fort Wilderness and Port Orleans Resort Riverside have pet friendly rooms. If you cannot leave Fido behind, both Fort Wilderness and Riverside have special floors and sections and blocks of rooms that are pre-assigned for guests staying with pets, specifically doggos. They're also located with easy access to the outdoor pet relief areas and designated walking trails. However, if you do bring your pup along with you, Disney does charge a nightly pet cleaning fee of $50, which you'll need to remember to budget back for. And let's talk about Grand Destino one more time. It might be better for you to choose a standard room at Grand Destino Tower. When you book a room here, you'll have the option of getting a standard view or a water view. Now, don't get me wrong, that water view is gorgeous, but if you book a standard view room, which gives you overhead views of the parking lot, the real benefit comes alive at night. Turns out you can actually get some pretty decent fireworks views from these rooms since they face the Hollywood Studios and Epcot parks. So maybe a parking lot view ain't such a bad thing after all. All right, just because you're staying at a moderate resort doesn't mean you're not gonna have seriously good restaurants only steps away from your room. The moderate resorts have a plethora of restaurants. That's right, a plethora for you to choose from with some having more options than others. But we're not gonna cover every single one today. We're gonna stick with a few of our favorites that you won't wanna miss. However, if you do wanna check out every restaurant in the moderate resorts, as well as on Disney property, you can always download our 2023 DFB Guide to Walt Disney World Dining on the dfbstore.com website. We update that puppy twice a year. It's got everything you need in there. Just make sure to type in the code YouTube to save money before you check out. So for a nice night out, a date night, a graduation celebration, stuff like that, Toledo Tapas Steak and Seafood is located at the tippy top of Grand Destino Tower. By the way, they just got recognized by the Michelin Guide, which is a huge deal in the restaurant space. Now, here you can dine on cuisine inspired by Spain, like Rioja braised chicken, cafe con leche dessert made with dark chocolate and chantilly, and the flight of four pinchos, which includes chilled mussels, olive oil poached tuna with lemon, a Spanish potato omelet, and Valdeon blue cheese with fig and honey. As you wait for your food, there's never gonna be a shortage of things to look at here. Small plates and house boards are plated in an onstage tapas kitchen, while floor to ceiling windows offer views of Disney World that are unparalleled. You might even be able to catch the fireworks from Hollywood Studios and Epcot while you're there, depending on when you visit. Next door to Toledo, there's Dahlia Lounge, which offers tapas, a vast assortment of Spanish wines, and sweeping rooftop views. This is more of an option for those looking for a date night, but don't necessarily want to commit to a full-blown restaurant experience. 
Outside the Grandestino Tower and more on the main Coronado Springs side of things, you can dine at Three Bridges Bar and Grill. It's right there in the middle of the lake. It's an on-the-water restaurant accessible via Three Bridges. See what they did there? From various areas of the hotel. I describe the meals here as upscale bar food with options like that warm manchengo and Oaxaca cheese dip, braised pork tacos, and other shareable plates. This is also where you're going to do that sangria university thing, by the way. Now, if you're big sangria fans, you are gonna be thrilled to know that Three Bridges makes these signature drinks in-house. You can order them by the glass, as a flight, or even the pitcher. And if you're looking for some live music for maximum serenading, Scat Cats Club and Lounge over at Port Orleans French Quarter serves drinks, jazz music, and beignets. Just keep in mind that the live band only plays on certain evenings, usually Fridays through Sundays. You can find even more live music over at River Roost in Port Orleans Riverside, which has Louisiana-inspired cocktails, a full bar, and an appetizer menu with bites like spinach and artichoke dip, Mardi Gras, pimento cheese, fritters, and loaded potato puffs. But what people really love about grabbing a cocktail here is listening to the musical stylings of sing-along piano player Yeehaw Bob. And hoop de doo musical review over at Fort Wilderness may not be romantic by any means, but boy howdy, it sure is a good time. Disney's hoop de doo musical review is an extravaganza of all-you-can-eat food and hoedown entertainment. And what's on the menu here? Well, fried chicken, barbecue, literal pails of American favorites like smoked barbecue pork ribs, seasonal vegetables and salad, baked beans, fresh baked cornbread, strawberry shortcake. And to make this deal all the sweeter, guests who are 21 years and older can also have unlimited refills of draft beer, wine, and sangria. Now it's a party. So let's talk about on the go options next. Sasagula Floatworks and Food Factory at Port Orleans French Quarter is a counter service slash food court slash your go-to place for Cajun classics for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Here you're going to be able to order the po' boy sandwiches, that wonderful jambalaya that I absolutely love and will sneak away from whatever I'm doing in Disney World to go get, and shrimp and grits, but you can also order those staple theme park foods too, like burgers and pizza and pasta. Looking for beignets on the go? Stick around French Quarter and head over to Scat Cat's Cafe, which is right in front of Scat Cat's Club. This cafe sits right next to Sasagula, and it's open all day long, meaning you can pick up Mickey beignets as a breakfast delicacy or an end of the day treat, whichever one fits your fancy. El Mercado de Coronado is similar to Sasagula and the way it's set up like a food court for guests to hit up during breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But unlike Sasagula, El Mercado's specialty foods pull from Tex-Mex options like Fire Braves Chicken Rice Bowl, Mexican street corn, and nachos. You can also find other quick service foods here too, like flatbreads, fresh tossed pastas, and hand-carved chef specials that rotate out daily depending on what's fresh. Now, heads up on El Mercado, the hours are a little bit different here. So they'll close after lunch and open again for dinner, but there's a couple hours in there that the food options are slim over there at Coronado, so just a heads up on that. Next, let's talk about those casual table service offerings. So not quite date night, not special dinner show, but just everyday run of the mill, right? Boatwright's Dining Hall at Port Orleans Riverside, they serve down home Southern Louisiana favorites like jambalaya, prime rib, and shrimp and grits. But if you're having a hard time choosing one entree, you can order the Taste of the Bayou Platter, which serves up samples of a little bit of everything. Hickory smoked pork ribs, crispy Cajun chicken, smoked sausage, barbecue beef brisket, mashed potatoes, mac and cheese, roasted corn with Cajun butter, and seasonal vegetables. Just remember that this table service restaurant is only open during dinner, so you'll have to go somewhere else for breakfast and lunch. And they've got a food court here too that's no problem to visit and pretty good. Now, technically Banana Cabana over at Caribbean Beach is a pool bar, but it also offers table side service, meaning you can grab a tropical drink and a couple Latin and Caribbean inspired appetizers and entrees like the jerk chicken wings, pineapple coconut bread pudding, created by the same chef that created the Ohana bread pudding, by the way, and Cuban sandwiches. Then yet again, let's head over to Coronado Springs to check out another solid dining choice because this resort has no shortage of them. Rick's Sports Bar and Grill is the place you'll go when you want comfort food and sports ball playing on every TV. And by every TV, I mean 31 that are in this restaurant. But what exactly is on the menu here? Well, burgers, wings, nachos, even more pub grub. One of my favorite things here are those wachos, which are waffle fry nachos, really good. And there's handcrafted cocktails and local draft beers. Now, when El Mercado is closed, this might be kind of your only option for a full meal unless you want to go to like a pool bar or something. And of course, cheating is totally allowed when it comes to your Disney hotel. Because Caribbean Beach sits on the Disney Skyliner route, you can always take the Sky Gondola or just walk over to Disney's Riviera. 
And you can also take that Skyliner to Boardwalk, Yacht and Beach Club, Epcot. That way you can dine at their restaurants instead if you're looking to shake things up. Or if you're staying at one of the Port Orleans resorts, jump on a riverboat and take it over to Disney Springs. There you're gonna have hundreds of other dining options at your disposal. Now, speaking of transportation and getting from here to there, this is gonna be one of the more challenging parts of your moderate resort stay. But there are some transportation means for these resorts that can make getting from here to there a little bit easier. But before we do that, let's talk about the internal bus loops that you're gonna find at each of the moderate resorts. Because the moderate resorts are so spread out, the Disney buses use an internal shuttle system. So unlike hotels like Disney's All Stars and Disney's Riviera, which only have one bus stop in front of their lobbies, you have multiple bus stops around the perimeter of these giant moderate resorts. Remember how we talked about Fort Wilderness? It's not as bad as that, but it's close. Granted, it's nice to have multiple bus stops around these rather large resorts, because that means no matter where your room is located, you're never gonna be too terribly far from one. However, the big downside of these bus loops is that your bus is gonna have to stop at every single one of them. Let's say you're staying at Caribbean Beach and you need to catch a bus to Magic Kingdom. If you end up boarding your bus at the very start of the bus loop, you're gonna have to wait for your bus to stop at seven, that's right, seven other bus stops in the internal shuttle system before finally heading over to the park. And if you're at the very last bus stop in the loop instead, there's a good possibility the previous seven bus stops will have already packed out to the brim the bus you were waiting for, forcing you to have to wait for the next one, which will take another 15 to 20 minutes and could still have the same problem as the last. While Caribbean Beach does have the most bus stops in its internal loop because that resort is huge, the other resorts still contain quite a few. Port Orleans Riverside has three bus stops and Coronado Springs has four. Port Orleans French Quarter only has one bus stop, but it also frequently takes the Riverside bus loop too, especially during those busier times of year. And then there's Fort Wilderness, which like I said, is a beast in and of itself, but we already attacked that, so you know what I'm talking about. But are these resorts entirely at the mercy of the bus systems? Well, it depends on where you're staying. Coronado Springs' only means of complimentary transportation are buses, though you're more than welcome to take your own car around property or rent a premium ride share if you'd rather not worry about all that bus looping. Again, Coronado Springs is the only moderate resort that does have valet parking. Meanwhile, the Port Orleans resorts have the riverboat services that can take you on a relaxing ride over to the docks of Disney Springs. The ride isn't speedy by any means, but it's a fun way to see a side of Disney that many don't get the chance to experience. Plus, you won't even have to pay for an Amphicar ride to cruise along those sparkling waters. It's completely free. Boat transportation, or water taxis in this case, can also be found at Fort Wilderness, which will take you straight on over to the front gates of Magic Kingdom. You can find those boats at the marina outside the settlement depot. And although Caribbean Beach has the largest internal bus loop, which can slow down your day majorly, it also has some of the most convenient moderate resort transportation methods too. Caribbean Beach is the only moderate resort with direct access to the Skyliner, which you can take to quickly get over to Epcot, Hollywood Studios, or another Skyliner area resort like Pop Century, Art of Animation, Riviera, Boardwalk Inn, Yacht and Beach Club, Swan and Dolphin, etc, etc. And that means you've got so many other places to explore outside the Caribbean Beach scene. Now, their Skyliner station is actually the hub for the gondolas, so you don't have to worry about transferring gondolas between rides. You just need to hop on the corresponding one that'll lead you to where you wanna go. And that being said, because this resort is so ginormous, you might find that your room is closer to Riviera's Skyliner station than the main Caribbean one. If you're staying in buildings 53 to 56 in the Aruba section, or buildings 24 to 26 in the Martinique section, then you're gonna be closer to Riviera's station. But if you're staying in buildings 41 to 45, in the Jamaica section or building 31 to 36 in Trinidad, you'll be closest to Caribbean Beaches Station. And any buildings I didn't list, well, you'll still have Skyliner access, but you're gonna be walking a lot every day to access it. Now, I've talked a lot about how moderate resorts are more expensive than values and less expensive than deluxes, but what does that really mean? I'm about to flash price ranges for each moderate resort and their room types up on the screen to give you more of a visual idea of what mid-level pricing really means on Disney grounds. Keep in mind that the lowest end of the price ranges reflect what you'll more than likely see during slower travel times like mid-January and back to school season, while the higher end is what you're gonna see during those peak travel times and holidays like Memorial Day weekend, spring break, summer, the month of December. So let's start over in Port Orleans. For the most part, the two Port Orleans resorts have very similar price ranges. 
typically running between the mid 200s and up to the mid 400s. The biggest discrepancy between the two are those royal rooms over at Riverside, which tend to range between 300 and 470 a night. Considering character-themed rooms like the standard Little Mermaid rooms at Disney's Art of Animation Value Resort can be priced in the mid to upper 200s per night, snagging a royal guest room for just a little more at Riverside may be worth it if your main concern is staying in a room that'll make your kids jaw drop. Now, the cabins at Disney's Fort Wilderness are pretty straightforward. You're looking at paying around $320 to $570 per night depending on the season. More often than not, we see these cabins fall into the mid 450s and if you can get a discount, they can even get into the 300s. Once again, not a bad deal in Disney speak when you think about how these cabins will give you tons of space like patio, kitchen, separate bedroom area. Typically, if you want a one bedroom villa at a deluxe resort, you're gonna be paying well over $600 depending on the hotel. And although All Star Music does have the cheapest family suites on property, which also have separate bedrooms, areas, these suites are not going to give you that patio or that full kitchen or privacy away from other guests like the Fort Wilderness cabins do. But that being said, traveling to and from the cabins can be quite the undertaking each time you want to go to a park or Disney Springs. Again, totally whacked out bus system. Now, if you're looking at these Disney's Caribbean beach prices and going, really, $230 for a standard room isn't that bad? Well, don't forget these rooms have a good chance of being farther away from all the amenities like the Skyliner and the lobby and the feature pool area and the food. If you don't wanna have to walk a forever long distance to reach those important areas around the hotel, you're better off sticking with the preferred rooms, which will put you closer to the action and make your stay way more convenient. Also, if you are saying $230 for a standard room isn't that bad, then congratulations, you've fully been indoctrinated into the Disney Price Point family. All right, you're gonna notice quite a discrepancy over at Coronado. Take a look at those suite prices, which can get as high as $2,500 per night. Those club level suites over at the tower might be located in a moderate resort, but that doesn't mean you'll be seeing those typical $300 to $400 price tags for it, like we've been seeing for the other rooms here. Yep, the club levels at Grand Destino are still typically cheaper than what you'll find at the deluxe resorts, but you'll definitely want to decide if having club level lounge access is really going to be worth hundreds of dollars more per night. Especially since you're still not going to have deluxe theme park benefits like the extended evening hours, despite paying some rather deluxe prices for your stay. And don't forget, when you're shopping around the Coronado Springs webpage and you think you found a room price that's going to work for you, double check to see if this room's going to place you in the tower or not. A stay in the casitas, the ranch shows and cabanas buildings is not the same as staying at the tower. These rooms aren't bad by any means, but they will place you further away from the lobby, further away from dining, and you'll be missing out on those gorgeous window views across the water or of the Epcot fireworks. Not to mention the tower rooms are nicer and they don't cost terribly much more to stay in versus the older Coronado room models. Tower or bust y'all, tower or bust. And just like that, you are now an expert on Disney's moderate resorts. Congratulations. Again, some people love these rooms, some people aren't fans, but at either rate, they're a nice alternative for a more luxurious stay, minus the outrageous luxurious prices. Before you head off toward another DFB resort video, because we got quite a few of them to check out next to help you get some much needed research under your belt, don't forget to send us your name and email at disneyfoodblog.com resorts for that full list of favorite Disney hotel snacks hand selected by yours truly and the rest of the DFB team. Thanks for listening everyone and thanks for watching. Please let me know your favorite moderate resort in the comments because I really want to see where we stack up here when it comes to DFB subscribers. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog and we'll see you real soon.